I wish I could stay, but per usual, I'm going to take off. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> that's what I do. One more time. One more time. One more abandonment. Uh, uh, but enjoy your time. Sure. You, you, I, I do you love you. Do I do love you for what it's worth. Uh, I always words, loved you. Words, words. Uh, loud and swing last night, people. Did you enjoy yourselves? Woo! They were fantastic. They're always fantastic. Yeah, I, uh, I I got to see the whole show last night. It was great. No, I didn't. I did not sing. Uh, that was not offered to me. Why don't you volunteer it? I bet right now, if you were to volunteer your services as a singer, they would say, "Come on out and sing." Would you like to see me sing? Have you guys ever heard of the singer Steve Perry? Yes. Right? Sounds almost exactly like no. him. Give us a give us a chance. No, no. Well, I, I actually know most of Steve Perry's work. <laughs> Great. Well, you, you sing it so well. So, um, um, let me see. Let me pick a song for you. Okay. Okay. Stay a while. Stay, Stay a while. while. Stay a while. My journey. You know that song, right? Okay, the only singing impersonation I can do is of uh, shitty Axl Rose. Are we ready? <laughs> it's the best I got. Strap in. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> so, uh, you know what? I don't think either of us are going to be playing that concert, you know? <laughs> no. But how did Axl Rose become a rock star with that voice? Because it's really a Drugs. <laughs> but that means everybody else has to be on drugs, not just him. And I think most people were. Yeah. Yeah. That explains the situation. I wasn't alive then, but I've heard it was great. <laughs> well, it was great, right? <laughs> no, this is not a secret. It's not like me and Mark are in the same demographic here. <laughs> that you were alive. Old enough to see, I was old enough to see the Beatles, pal, so. Yeah, I mean. Don't worry, no one's like, whoa. Did you hear that? Yeah. Whoa. Like, oh, shit. No, someone's like, the Beatles, I think Harry Styles covered that once. <laughs> I saw it on TikTok. No, seriously, I, I, um, how many people here think Axl Rose has an objectively good voice? Nobody. See? <laughs> it's only because I can do it, kind of. Yeah. All right, see? So this explains it. Anyway, what do we how are you? I'm great. How are you, Vancouver? Woo! Hello, the mainland. Oh, sorry. I asked you how you were doing. Oh, you're sorry. Why didn't you ask me that? How, how are you doing, Mark? It's great to see you as always. No, you're lying. That's no. You're lying right now. No, no. I know when you're lying. You see. Whenever you're lying, your hair turns white. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, I've been lying my ass off then, so. Uh, <laughs> no. Vancouver. Did you feel nostalgic at all? I mean, you're, you're from here. Yeah, but I, I definitely... So you, you don't feel the same nostalgia as I feel flying in and saying, oh, remember when I used to work here? Uh, yep, no, I still have the nostalgia. I don't know about you guys, but like coming home to Vancouver, you get off the plane and you can like feel the air quality go up. Yeah. Uh, it's fantastic. In comparison to Los Angeles, you say? Yes, for sure. But it hasn't been good lately, right? Because of the There has been a lot of smoke, yeah. Yeah, so avoid not cannabis. Cannabis. You're not about cannabis. But There's no cannabis bars. in BC. <laughs> There's no mushrooms in BC. <laughs> Nothing here. They, they, they do. do. It's legal to sell mushrooms? It's a gray area. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to Granville Street right now and get mushrooms. Pro tip. Yeah, Granville's, wait, not, not in a business establishment. You have to go No, it's like, like a store. You go to a store and get mushrooms? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Also, for the under 18 crowd, just don't tell your parents. <laughs> so, I would be really interested in seeing what one of these panels would be like if you and I took a stem. Yeah, I mean, that came out here. I'm very a little nervous. nervous. I guarantee you I would be taking my pants off over my head. <laughs> you say that now. Yeah. Kind of like a fear and loathing type panel. Yes. It would just be us crawling on the floor. Right? And we would be having a blast. But yeah, you guys would be like, this is not, the, uh, this is not entertaining. Yeah. I paid a gold ticket for this. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm trying to eat the gold ticket. <laughs> But I think besides that, I mean, we should walk around, you and I. I mean, I'm having a much better time with you than I did with Jim. Aww. Aww. Shut up! <laughs> oh, that turned into this. First of all, he's not, nobody, he's not going to hear that. He's not, that's not going to get back there. Because this stuff doesn't go out live. No, no, no recordings, no cameras. No recordings, you know. So they're not taking pictures, and they're not posting the, on social media. They're and no one would tag anybody in any kind of thing. Nobody would tag me either. No. In a thing where I'm saying I'm having a better time with you than with Jim Beaver. <laughs> to be fair, I was not on Deadwood though, so you know. What? Because you weren't even born yet. True. <laughs> Very true. I'm kidding. I love Jim. Jim's impossible. Uh, what? What? No, no, no. Let me finish. <laughs> impossible to hate. You just said impossible, and you stopped. There was no. There was no response that came That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, my hair would be white. <laughs> uh, shall we ask the kind people? No, we're not going to ask them. Right. Right. No, you don't get to ask, ask questions today. Oh, I'm kidding. kidding. All right. Who, who do you want to go first? Uh, uh, look how enthusiastic she is. I mean, I guess <laughs> well, she had to tolerate her bullshit for 10 minutes. That's why. <laughs> Not once, you're the first. <laughs> Thank you, it's refreshing. I don't get that. I wanted to ask. I have one signature. Hello, in the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, you were too busy trying to kill me, or sorry, I'm interrupting. I'm, I'm pulling a Sebastian Roche and completely taking over the entire thing. <laughs> I just didn't understand the reference, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Now that I understand it, we can proceed. So, um, now I've forgotten my question. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, okay, see ya. <laughs> This is for you, Alex. I want to ask something kind of deep and, you know, about technique and motivation, but what I really, really, really want to know is, did they let you keep those freaking awesome glasses? And for you, Mark, were you just a little bit pissed off when you never got glasses like that? Do you, do you mean like the white glasses? Yeah. Listen, you can walk to any local mall in America right now. <laughs> They're a pair of white Oakleys. And I think they give you a monster energy drink on the way out. Okay, well, Christmas is coming up, so uh, someone better be thoughtful and think of you. Uh, I did not get to keep the white glasses. What? I know. Somebody didn't like you. A lot of people didn't like me. I got to keep a lot of Really? Yeah. Got nothing. You got nothing. Now, I have no idea what you're talking about, so. What, what were the white glasses? Can you explain? I, I played a I'm demon. sure nobody here knows. <laughs> Not at all. I played a demon no. called Belphegor. And, uh, what? Yeah. What show are we talking about? Uh, so we're, uh, natural. <laughs> this one. A demon called Belphegor? Yeah. <laughs> I, no, but it's... <laughs> it's not fucking, I know all the demons. Belphegor? Yeah. Belphegor? Yeah. Belphegor? Elf is a boar? Belphador. <laughs> boar. Belphagor. Or. I have no idea what you're talking about. Alright, so you played this one. When did you play this game? Uh, only for three episodes, three episodes in season 15. Uh, oh, that's in season 15. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's on Amazon, bro. Because um, I'm a loser, okay? <laughs> Didn't get to keep them. Uh, what was it? Okay, so you played a demon and the demon wore the glasses, basically. Yeah. And and they apparently were really cool because they were white Oakleys. I love Oakleys, so I would like to wear glasses like that. And you can. And I can. <laughs> uh, because I actually got them from Wardrobe and he didn't, so. Ah. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Always steal guys. Take applause. Take the applause. Hello. Jack had a sister. Well, first of all, her name would be Jackie. Um, 
and I would finally have a friend my age, as I guess would be uh, great for Jack, you know? Because everybody I hung out with was a little bit older than me, you know? So maybe I'd have like a buddy to do normal activities with uh, that don't involve uh, stabbing people. She's kind of stabby. <laughs> this is your, this is your character. My character yeah. So no longer theoretical. This, this really happened. You really stabbed someone. Wow. That's what we're calling blood. Okay. <laughs> Did they recover? Are they? Oh. for this part. Uh, Minus the stabbing. No stabbing involved. I mean, what's the insanity thing is, I guess, questionable. I've been acting since the 70s, so may not all be here. Fair. But, yeah. Well, so <laughs> can we get out on, uh, on Amazon Prime? Um, I don't, but there are clips from it on YouTube right now. It, it was extremely dark, um, and not a lot of places would pick it up. Yeah. So it is around. I know I've seen clips on YouTube for sure. All right, well, we're, we're all going to check it out. I think mean, horror fans are out here. <laughs> I remember we're going to see this. No. Um, I, I don't even know how to answer that. You guys did it very well and very seriously. Well, we were... Uh, serious might be a loose term, but... Yeah. Right? yeah. So for me, it would be like Alanis Morissette and Jackie's Little Pill. Ooh. Yeah. That's a great album. Good and answer. Not a weak song on that album. The album of bangers. <laughs> no, we don't all use that term, huh? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> don't worry, the kid the kids know it, right? <laughs> Thank you, children. <laughs> like, let's help this poor guy out on stage. Uh, he doesn't know if he's coming or going. Bangers, it's like hits. The banger. <laughs> I prefer groovy. Groovy. <laughs> Not banger, huh? I'm losing this panel. Hello! <laughs> Come on down. Uh, hello. Uh, uh, hi. Mark, it's really nice to meet you. And, um, Wait, what? It's been really nice to meet you. To Al. Or to me too? Yeah, both oh, of you. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Nice so, to meet you. Um, oh my God. <laughs> um, so then, uh, as an actor, what do you think was like the most memorable scene that your character played on the series? Like something like you remember and you say, okay, this was like a, uh, a point when the character grows or it changes something about it, like a lot. I mean, you played your character a lot longer than me, so, uh, no, I mean, you must have, like, do you have, like, a seminal moment for, for your character or a turn that you was kind of no going back from? <laughs> what? Well, for me, uh, <laughs> definitely the, uh, I am a Winchester was kind of a big deal for Jack. <laughs> In terms of him, like, Choosing his actual uh, family as opposed to his really other family. Really hurt my feelings right no, 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 I'm saying that. You, you know, this is because. Where's my lightsaber? Hold on. This is, because I, this is because I didn't directly answer the question when you asked me. I wasn't cooperating. So now you're going to have to answer the question. Well, I didn't directly answer the question when you asked me. I wasn't cooperating. So now you just threw that in my face. You like the Winchesters over your real dad. That's, that's a hurtful thing to say. And you don't care. You're not apologizing. Right that's a hanger. <laughs> So that's the seminal moment for you is when you chose your family over your blood family or the birth of you. 
Come on. That's not true. You do have an idea. I'm interested in your impression of me too. You got me interested in your impression. Okay. What do you think I would be arrested for? Yeah. Just off the top of your head, say what I've been thinking about it. Well, somebody that doesn't really know you would be like, oh, okay, that guy's a skirt, and they'd probably just like, if they got your impression of like you being a skirt, they'd probably be like, oh man, we gotta get rid of him. <laughs> Like, if they didn't know you were smart, but they saw you at Lucifer, they'd probably be like, oh, man. But what do you think I'd be arrested for? Quickly, name a felony. Don't don't Treason? Huh? Treason. Treason. That one really got you. That one got you right in the heart. I know that. Treason. Yeah. I'd be arrested for treason. Wow. Arson. Arson. <laughs> Protesting while on the street. That's closer, I think. What? I like their better because it wasn't crowd. Okay. Uh, I think if someone accidentally stepped on a prank, I think you might let loose on them. Oh, that would be bad. Yeah, yeah. So there goes that. There goes that assault charge. So you can you can say if. I got arrested if somebody fucked with Frankie and I cracked him. Yeah, that would not surprise me. You yeah. got some mitts on you too, you know? I got mitts. Yeah. I got uh, for me, uh, probably like peeing in the wrong place. <laughs> probably like too close to a school. And then I get on some sort of weird list. And then, uh, you know, you can't hang out with your nieces and nephews anymore. <laughs> I'm still trying to get the charges for votes. <laughs> I did, yeah. yeah. Can I tell you a story about how good law enforcement is in Los Angeles real fast? I got a feeling that it's, it's not great. No, it's not. It's not. Okay. Um, so I was, I was driving uh, down Gardner Street in Los Angeles, Hollywood, right? The heart of Hollywood, near Sunset Boulevard, Hollywood Boulevard. And suddenly I see a middle-aged man in his 50s, naked as a gay bird, walking in the opposite direction. He's wearing one item. He has his watch on. Ah, oh, when you're naked, you really gotta go. You got it. I'm gotta, running behind. You got it time, right? So I, of course, flip a U-turn because he's walking the opposite direction. Yeah, I can see the package on this guy. <laughs> I saw the package, but that wasn't why I flipped oh, okay. the U-turn. I was actually calling the police and and had them on the line, and and I'm saying I am following a buff naked man on Gardner, and he's heading towards Sunset Boulevard, broad daylight, okay? And they have me on the phone, and they're sort of unresponsive. Well, what is he doing? He's walking! He's <laughs> naked! And he's naked, which I don't think is legal. I don't think that's legal either, no. He walks by a schoolyard full of children, still on a mission, though. He's like, boom, boom. Not stopping, just stopping the schoolyard. Good. Was, right? That's what I think. <laughs> that was my mistake. <laughs> He went there again. He went there again. Walks by the schoolyard. I'm like, we're walking. He's walking by a schoolyard now. So what is he doing? He's walking by a schoolyard. It's like they're, is he doing anything assaultive? Right? Yeah. And as long as he's not doing anything assaultive, though, what he's doing here. He walks across Sunset Boulevard in broad daylight, buck naked. No cop around anywhere. Some fruit vendors, that's it. Nobody <laughs> notices him walking across Sunset Boulevard except for me following him and the police. <laughs> Well, to make a long story short, he gets across Hollywood Boulevard, disappears into an apartment, apartment complex, and that was it. No cops. Nothing. Right? What we all know the story? You can walk around naked in Hollywood, it's just fine. Let your dreams come true. Right? <laughs> I don't know where that's, I don't, I don't know. Hi. Have you ever walked around Hollywood naked? <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Yeah. My question is, what advice would you give someone on the street that actually needs to eat? Yeah. That was Mark Shepard. That was Mark Shepard. Mark. <laughs> um, what would you say as a, as a young... Well, I, I defer to you. You're someone I, you know, look up to and admire. You've been doing this a long time. What would you say? I would say, one, treat it as a crab. Right? If, you were, if you wanted to be a surgeon, what would you do? You'd go to medical school, you'd read medical books. You take anatomy class, 
And we practiced a lot. You'd have to go to a residency and work, work it out so that you became the best surgeon you could possibly be. And I think you should treat acting in the same way. You should read lots of plays. You should get up on stage as much as possible. You should learn a technique that I think helps you access your emotional life and helps you break down scenes and plays in a way that you can act. And then practice that over and over and over again until opportunity runs into you. Because it will if you're prepared. Preparation and opportunity means success. So just work really hard. There's no guarantee. There's no guarantee. So, you know, you have to be doing it for the love of the craft and for not for any other reason. Because you won't be satisfied unless you're doing it for the love of the craft anyway. Right? Is that... Is that alright? Yeah. Okay. I get students who ask me that all the time. I get students who ask me that all the time. I tell them that you have to work hard. There's always dead silence. Really? Yeah, because they sort of, they sort of want the, the magic pill. You know, they want that thing. You know, oh, I want you to do this one little thing and then I can, you know, they don't want to be famous. They don't, they don't want to be good actors. They want to be famous. It's different, right? It's different. The Kardashians are famous. Superman returns. Hello. Hi. Um, I just want to, uh, my question is for Alex. I just want to say you're a massive inspiration to me as an actor. So I just want to say thank you for that. Uh, and I wanted to ask you about um, Dark Tide. Uh, I watched the trailer the other day and it was fucking awesome. Oh, thank you. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit how it came about or anything about it? Uh, it was COVID. Um, uh, it was COVID. <laughs> and then. I think for a lot of us here, you start to go like, well, you know, I should probably try to do something productive during this time. So me and my buddies uh, chatted, and uh, we wanted to make something small and compact, but also that was set in the Pacific Northwest, because I feel like often this city, uh, you know, it plays different cities, but never plays itself. So we wanted to have something that was set in the Pacific Northwest, and that could be contained, and also have uh, horror elements. And you know, I think when people see me, they go, that guy's a sailor. <laughs> no. So that was, yeah, the opportunity to just collaborate and make something with friends was kind of the way Wait, it what about. Is, what is this called? Uh, we made a proof of, proof of concept, uh, like, for a horror movie, essentially. Oh, really? Yeah. Can I find it? Anymore? Yeah. Wait, what's it called? It's called Dark Tide. Dark Tide. So anybody wants to fund my movie, call me. Thanks. Thank you. Hi. Um, so my question is for you. Um, and it's basically just, you know, when you read that very first script, like as actors, like what made you go, oh, this, this is the character that I want to play. Like what, what drew you to that when you were obviously you were a cast, so, you know, minus the paycheck. What, what made you go, yeah, I really want to play this character in particular? For supernatural? Yeah, but sorry, yeah, for supernatural. Though I guess because it is supernatural, several characters you both play, but the, whatever one is. Yeah, I mean, I was I was fortunate. I got I got the call from um, Jeremy Carver <clears throat> asking if I wanted to play uh, Lucifer, and uh, I thought it'd be crazy to say no because it's it's a great uh, a great opportunity. So I said yes, and I, I thought that was early Lucifer. Uh, the, the season five Lucifer, Lucifer was very interesting. I thought it portrayed the character in, in a light that was original. I hadn't seen it before in other Lucifers. And uh, and the dynamic between all the characters as as very original. So for me that was that was my draw. Uh, Jeremy Carver did not call me personally. I auditioned a bunch of times. Actually, being from Vancouver, uh, you audition, everyone has like a rite of passage of, you know, in New York it's Law and Order, but for Vancouver it's Supernatural. So like every actor in the city has auditioned for Supernatural minimum like five, six times. So I auditioned for Supernatural probably like five or six times previous throughout my adolescence until I got the show, to the point where I refused to read for the show anymore because I never got cast. And I was like, I was like, Stupid show, I'm like, I'm never gonna be on a stupid show. 
And then I finally got on the show. Um, so then I had to take those words back. Um, I just thought it was a, for me, it was a, a fun mix of this guy can be very innocent, but then also like extremely powerful and unleashing all this force, uh, which we really didn't get, to, we only got to see a little bit, but there definitely was a notion that Jack might go evil. And I'm pretty sure it got cast because I can do both sides of that. Yeah, that was that was, that was really cool. You never knew it. that was the tension for a totally. long time. You just never knew which side he was gonna fall on. Yeah. And I, I've said this before, but I would have really loved that there was an arc in the show where you and I just went full full bad, you know? That would have been really fun. I would like that. Yeah. Well I appreciate that you say that now. <laughs> but you know, I did make my choices, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. I got the choices are done, they're permanent, you can't take it back. Okay. <laughs> uh, hi, my question for both of you is, if you could be friends with any character in Supernatural, who would it be? Dean. Oh, that was quick, eh? <laughs> Why Dean? Why not Sam? <laughs> <laughs> Dean is like he's like a chocolate chip cookie. It's hard on the outside, it's soft on the inside. <laughs> like good taste in music, drives a good car, he's tough, but you know, cool. He's got a sense of principles that are in commitment issues. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 he's, no. He doesn't have commitment issues. He knows exactly what he wants. He doesn't want to be committed. That's it. Hey, he's a free man. He's Someone can work this into a Tinder bio, right? <laughs> I don't see him sharing a burger with anybody. You know, he has a burger in You know, you don't want to necessarily like share a burger with another man. You know? Yeah, but Sam would share a burger with another man. Would he cut it in half or he yes. just bite into it? Yeah, he would eat it with a fork. A lot of Sam slander tonight. I love it. He's not Sam slander. I'm just saying that he has delicate sensibilities. He's a very sensitive man. He's big. And he's like an oak tree. You know, in reality, but he's, uh, he's, he's, you know, his character is very sensitive. He's the conscience. It's true, right? Yeah, he's the one who's always, you know, throwing an obstacle at the dean's like, I'm going to kick this guy's ass. Well, wait a minute. What if we don't? Says, what <laughs> if we do this? Hear me out. What if we figure out something through the internet? We can catch so and so. I did really like how all of a sudden, like, like me and Cass were just like good at the internet. Like, one, one episode on, like, I'm like touching brick walls because I'm like, oh, look at this. And, like, three episodes later, I'm like, like I'm just touching the mainframe. You're like, what? <laughs> Skip the whole biohacking step like I was Neo from the Matrix. <laughs> There's a reason for that that's justifiable. Yeah, moving the story along. No, no, no. <laughs> moving into the story, you are almost God. If you couldn't get the internet, that's fucked up. Right? If you change things in the universe, but you can't figure out how to fucking get on Facebook, there is something wrong with you. Right? The story can proceed perfectly logically. Alright, you're having issues with that. No, I'm like, I'm like hacking into like traffic cams and stuff. I'm like, oh, here it is. Like, you're God! You're like, you're a, you're a what? Well, it's not a cherubim, you're a what? A Nephilim. A cherub. <laughs> I'm a cherub is like a little baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little, little plump guy. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> Not you. I meant Nephilim. I meant Nephilim. That's fine. And so that means that you can hack into a fucking mainframe. You can do whatever you want. Okay. Right? You can change matter. You can do anything. I like you don't believe me. Oh. Yes. Yes. Hello. Why do they have that extremely bright light in your face? Does it, does it disturb you? Okay. And so you feel like God's looking directly at you. No, you don't. Not at all. But we can see you, and you probably can't see us. I, yes, I see you guys. Okay. Okay, my question is, uh, outside of Supernatural, is there something you want to play? Do we have it played, or that we no. have played? Haven't played yet, but outside of Supernatural. Okay. I feel like you have one. I feel like you have one in the cooker, even. 
like of a character you well I guess maybe you played it before, but like someone you really want to play that you that you have. Oh. You mean like a game? Or television or a stage play? Sure. <laughs> Love this answer, yes. <laughs> anyone that anyone that wants to hire me, I'll uh, I'll play with you. Um, you know, I'd like to. We are contractors, people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I'd, I'd like to play um, Iago. That's pure evil, right? Iago is pure evil. I'd like to. I'd like to play that. Iago. I don't know Iago. I don't know how to read. Calm down. Hey, that's a banger. <laughs> that's a banger right there. Let's TikTok that one. Iago. Iago <laughs> is the uh, the villain who undoes a fellow. He's the bad guy. He hates a fellow because he's good. So he's he's like the embodiment of pure envy, hating the good for being good because he wants to destroy. Him. That is evil. That is very evil. Mm. So if I'm gonna play a bad guy, that's about as bad as you get right there. What do you think? What do you want to play? I was gonna give a way less serious answer than that. <laughs> Um, there's a really great book called Sisters Brothers. Oh, but they already did a movie, dude. I know, but what if they didn't? <laughs> so I would have liked to have been in that movie. That, that would have been, that yeah. Been, he turned me on to that, that book. And that Patrick great. DeWitt, who's also a Canadian author from the island. Um, great book. Great book. Not so sure about the movie. Not great movie. Yeah, what are you uh, it's a western, but it's like kind of a noir western. I would have loved to have played any part in that, so. Yes. That's a great arc to that character. Yeah. But you have to gain a few pounds for that if you wanted to. Uh... I'll drink ice cream. <laughs> Nowadays we have to do that. Ever since De Niro, everybody has to gain a lose weight. Raging Bull, another baby bull. Right. Hello! Hi, I'm Matthew from Oregon, and my question is Is Jack Black the Joker? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. See, like the pinks and oranges when you get like a really beautiful sunrise. Uh, I'm feeling generally optimistic. Uh, I hope you guys are too. So uh, I think it's been a really nice day. How about you guys? Yeah. I feel like these weekends, you know, we have highs and lows, but hopefully you can carry uh, some of the fun that we had this weekend throughout your week, throughout your month. You know. Speaking of which. We said something nice, actually, so, yeah. Nice? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Well, you look judgy, though. No, I'm not judgy. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm distrustful, maybe? Distrustful that we said something nice? I, I, I hope it's true. Yeah. Well, it wasn't about you, but it was, you know. Yeah, right, right. It was just something nice. General about the day. Yeah, about the day, the, the world. People were talking to you about you the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of the theme of the panel, actually. Oh, that's cool. No, that, that, that's that, cool. That, that makes me feel great. Right. So um, but, you know, uh, I love you guys. You know, there's nothing but love, you know, as Chuck and as Rob. I do love you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Can you see the face? The vacancy? <laughs> I do, I do, uh, I do, I do, I do love you. Guys, Chuck, and uh, as Chuck, and uh, and and as well. Um, and, uh, we were actually seeing earlier how fantastic the show was. Oh, thank you. Last night, yeah. you guys were great. I love the back and forth, and the left and the right. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Stop beating yourself up, pal. You were great. Was not loud, babe. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, it was a fun show, really fun show. But more importantly, how did this, how did the panel go? How did it go? This one was one question. Oh, that's great. Yeah, just one. That's great. I'm still going to be thinking about it, you know, for a while. All right. Well, um, in the meantime, please give it up one more time for Mark Pellegrino. Yeah.